Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at forces and friction, so we can answer questions from exercise 5c. So that reaction force that we've been working out this whole time is finally coming useful. We need that reaction force to work out the value of the friction. We need that reaction force because the amount that a particle weighs is going to affect how much friction that particle is going to have. And the other thing that's going to affect the amount of friction that a particle is going to have is the type of surface that it's rubbing on. Um, so if it's, a, it's, if it's a sheet of ice, then it's not going to be much friction. If it's like sandpaper, there's going to be a higher value of friction. So there are two things that depend on the value of friction. The weight, kind of, of the particle, or the officially it's the normal reaction, and the type of surface that the particle is sliding along. The maximum value for the friction of force is calculated as below. And it's got a bit of a strange formula. It's an F max equals mu times R, where mu is representing the coefficient of friction. That's kind of like the property of the surface that you are on. And this value will generally be in between 0 and 1. 0 having no friction, 1 having loads of friction. And R, we know R is the reaction force, or the normal reaction force, uh, is finally coming in useful. Uh, so if a, if a surface is being described as smooth, you can imply that the coefficient of friction is zero. So let's have a look at a question here. A block of mass 5 kilograms is lying at rest on, e on rough horizontal ground. The coefficient of friction between the block and the ground is 0.4. A horizontal force P is applied to the block. Find the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the block and its acceleration when P is either 10 newtons or P is 19.6 newtons or when P is 30 newtons. So let's go through those different scenarios. Then we have a block on a table, 5 kilogram weight. That's a force of 5 G newtons acting downwards. So therefore the reaction force is going to balance out this 5g newton force there. For the first case, we're going to have a 10 newton force trying to pull it to the right hand side, and the frictional force will be acting to the left. My preference is to actually write the whole word friction because it's a, it gets a little bit confusing when you've got F standing for force and F standing for friction. My preference is to write the whole word friction. So, we need to find the maximum possible frictional force. To do this, we need R, the reaction force. So resolving the forces uh, up and down, we know that there's not going to be any acceleration in this direction, so the forces should just be equal to each other. R here is equal to 5 G newtons. So now that we know that, we can now calculate the maximum value of friction. So the maximum value that friction can take here with a coefficient of friction of 0.4 is 0.4 times the reaction force which is 49 so therefore our maximum friction force is 19.6 so we have a 10 newton force trying to pull it to the right and we have a force that at maximum will be 19.6 so what's going to happen in this situation then well when we have this uh, 10 newton force here this 10 newton force is not going to be big enough to pull the friction force that will have a maximum value 19.6. So therefore, in this case, the frictional force will prevent the 10 newton force from moving the object. In this case, the frictional force will be 10 newtons. So this is what we need to bear in mind when we're working with F max. We've this formula here calculates the maximum value of friction, that's 19.6. But in this case, we only needed 10 newtons of that possible 19.6 newtons worth of friction to prevent the object from moving. Now, if it were a straightforward formula where F is just equal to mu R, you'd get the very surreal scenario of a 19.6 newton force acting to the left, in which case your friction would actually be pulling your particle to the left, which doesn't make any sense at all. So that's why the formula has an F max subscript inside there. It's saying that the maximum value that friction can hold is 19.6,
and if the force trying to pull it was less than 19.6, it would just mean the particle can't move. For the example where we have a force of 19.6 exactly, therefore we are going to be using the maximum value of friction allowed to prevent the object from moving. So in this case the force uh, of friction is 19.6, um, and the particle will still remain in a stationary position. Now this situation is known as limiting equilibrium and we'll look at a question with limiting equilibrium in a couple of uh, videos time um, as the object is on the point of movement. If we were to increase this force slightly to 19.7 it would start to move. So we're saying that almost it's starting to move but not quite. And the final diagram here is when this force on the right hand side is 30 newtons. Now the 30 newtons here is obviously now going to be bigger than the frictional force, 19.6. So we're going to be taking 19.6 as our value for friction here. So this particle will accelerate. Resolving forces horizontally, we have a 30 newton force acting to the right. And we have a frictional force acting in the opposite direction of 19.6, which is equal to then 5 times a. So do the subtraction, divide through by 5, and you get 2.08 meters per second squared. Okay, so the summary of this is that sometimes you have to use the whole value of friction, but sometimes friction will just prevent an object from moving if the friction is higher than the pulling force. Okay, let's have a go at another question then. So we have a five kilogram box and it lies at rest on a rough horizontal floor. The coefficient of friction between the box and the floor is 0.5. A force P is applied to the box. Calculate the value of P required to cause the box to accelerate if P is applied horizontally or P is applied at an angle where theta is, uh, has a tan component of three over four. So let's draw this diagram then. We have five kilograms. We have a force being applied to the right of P initially. That's just to the right. And we have a frictional force uh, going backwards then. Okay, so let's uh, resolve vertically to the normal reaction. So we want to find the value of P that will start to accelerate this particle here then. So the first thing we need to do is work out the maximum value that friction can take. And in order to do that, we need to work out what R is, because that's the formula to work out friction. So F equals MA in the upward direction. These two forces are not going to be accelerating in that direction, so they will just balance each other out. So in this case, R is equal to 5 G newtons, or 49 newtons when you calculate it. So now let's find the maximum value of friction. So the maximum value of friction is going to be mu, which is 0.5, times R, which is 49. So we're going to get a maximum value of friction here of 24.5. So if we want our particle to start moving to the right, we need to have a P force that's bigger than 24.5. So you could say here effectively that P needs to be bigger than 24.5 newtons. Or the force of P equals 24.5 newtons will be the force that will start to accelerate the particle. But now let's have the same object and the same scenario happening here. This time P is being applied at an angle um, to the horizontal. Now you're thinking here, well, maybe then we just work out the horizontal component of it and then set that equal to F. Unfortunately, it's not that straightforward. P here is actually also going to have a vertical component that will affect the value of R here. So we're going to have to resolve very carefully and very methodically. When we resolve horizontally here, we're going to get P cos theta. And when we resolve vertically here, we're going to get P sine theta. We know from the little um, right angle triangle trick from the last video that in this case we can use a Pythagoras triangle to work out sine of theta is 3 over 5 and cos of theta is 4 over 5. So what we can do up here then is replace the cos theta p force with 0.8p and going upwards with 0.6p.
So we can see here we're going to have two forces going upwards, R and P, or 0.6P, and the 5G Newton force will be acting downwards. So in this case, resolving upwards and downwards, we don't have any acceleration in that component. We're going to have R acting upwards, 0.6P acting upwards, and 5G acting downwards. That's why it's got a negative. So these two forces upwards and one force down will cancel each other out. So the R force here, unfortunately, has a little bit of algebra in. It's 49 minus 0.6P. So now using this R value, we need to now find the maximum value of friction. So we're going to do mu times R, so that's 0.5 times R. So that's 0.4 times 49 minus 0.6P. So in this case, then, we're going to simplify this to 24.5 minus 0.3P. That's the value of friction. So what we're going to need now is this 0.8P force to cancel out this, um, or to, to exceed this 24.5 minus 0.3p Newton force. So we need 0.8p to be bigger than this force here for it to start pulling it along. So resolving horizontally. Let's just uh, make sure we do this thoroughly. We have 0.8p acting to the right, and we're going to then subtract this uh, frictional force here, so taking away 24.5 and then taking away minus 0.3p, so it's a plus 0.3p. And then we're going to rearrange and divide by 1.1, so we get 22 newtons here. Okay. So actually, in this case, it was more efficient to be pulling this particle here at an angle because it relieved some of the friction from my particle on the ground here, which is quite an interesting thing to, to deduce, actually. Right then, so that's how we do these types of questions then. Make sure that when you've got a force being applied at an angle, that that force, when you resolve it fully, may actually affect the value of the reaction force. The reaction force is not just as straightforward as the counterweight force. Right then, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. It's another one of these ones where we have a force being applied at an angle. So make sure you resolve this force here fully um, to make sure that you've actually got the full correct value of R here. Pause the video and try this question out. Right then, so in this question here then, in the diagram to the right, the coefficient of friction between the ground and the particle is 0.4. Explain why the particle will remain stationary. So, there's going to be quite a big explanation to this. Um, so, we're going to need to resolve the force first. So, in this case, we're going to have um, 2, so, yeah, uh, 5, no, uh, the force is 2, so it's going to be 2 cos 30. And along here, we're going to have 2 sine 30. So in this case here, when we resolve upwards and downwards forces, we're going to see that um, we have no acceleration in this direction, so the forces will balance out. R plus 2 sine 30 will balance out with 5g. Now, sine 30 is just a half, so 2 times a half is 1. So here we know that R is going to equal 5g minus 1. Now in the next case, we're going to have um, to now work out the value of friction. So in this case here, the frictional value is going to be, so friction equals mu times r, and the frictional value here is going to be 0.4 times this value here, so 0.4 times 5g minus 1. And we can calculate this on the calculator. I'm assuming here it's going to be much, much, much bigger than 2 cos 30. 5 times 9.8 minus 1. And that value of friction is going to be 19.2. The pulling force is going to be 2 cos 30. And we know that cos 30 is root 3 over 2. So this is just going to be root 3. So the reason that the particle will remain stationary here is that the pulling force 
is going to be less than the frictional force. Okay, so there we are. That's the reason why the particle will remain stationary when the force is just a 2 Newton force. Part B now, the 2 Newton force increases to x Newton such that the particle starts to accelerate to the right with an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. Calculate the value of x to three significant figures. Okay, great. So now that's going to be an x, this will change to an x, and this will change to an x. So let's do the same thing again then. Let's resolve upwards and downwards to work out the value of r. So we're going to have here upwards forces equal downwards forces. So r plus x sine 30 will balance out with the 5g force going downwards. So therefore r is going to equal 5g minus x sine 30 or x over 2 because sine 30 is just a half. So now what we're going to do is work out the frictional force. And in this case, it's going to be 0 0.4 times this value here. So 5g minus x over 2. So x over 2. We'll leave it like that for now. Oh, no, in fact, we will expand it now. We will expand this. So 5 times 0 0.4 gives us 2. So it's going to be 2g minus and then 0 0.4 times a half will give us 1 fifth. So it'd be x over 5. Yeah, that'll be, that's a nice... Uh, frictional force there. So now what we have is the force going to the right, take away the force to the left. So on our diagram here, we're going to have a force to the left that is um, 2g minus x over 5, and a force to the right that's going to be x cos 30. So resolving forces now to the right, we're going to have, treating the right direction as positive, x cos 30 minus this friction force here is 2g minus x over 5 uh, equals mass times acceleration. So it's going to be um, m, which is 5, times acceleration, which is 3. So this was an f equals ma equation I've made here. Right then, let's expand the brackets and simplify where we can then. So cos 30 is root 3 over 2. So it's going to be root 3 over 2 um, x plus x over 5, because when we expand the bracket we have a double negative, and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to move the 2g force onto the other side, so equals 15 plus 2g, and then finally what we'll do is we'll factorise the x out of this thing here, so it's going to be x times root 3 over 2 plus 1 fifth, equals 15 plus 12g. And then the final thing we'll do is divide by this uh, calculation here. So doing this all in the calculator all at once, top of the fraction 9, 15 plus 12 times 9.8, divided by brackets root 3 over 2, plus 0.2, that's the value of a fifth, so we get x here equaling, quite a high force, 124 newton force. Lovely. So there we are. That's the answer to this question here then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 5c. Make sure you're really comfortable with friction because what we're going to do next is move on to questions where we've got a, we've got, where we've got a slope and friction coming into play. So make sure you're really comfortable with slopes and really comfortable with friction, because when we combine the two, the diagrams do get messy, the calculations do get complicated, and I don't want you to be stumbling over things that you can be practicing now. So have lots of goes uh, questions from exercise 5c, the problem solving, the exam type questions are really good, and uh, yeah, great, thanks very much for watching.